Hello everyone, Jill here with Whispering Willow Farm. Welcome back. Today I'm going to be talking to you guys about a vertical gardening with green stock planter. So we are going to set up plants. I'm also going to share with you a big sale that they have going on. But before we really jump into this video, I want to talk to you about why I chose to do this video. Because if you are not new around here, you know we do not do a lot of container gardening. Um, you know, we are fortunate to be able to have space to have raised beds, in-ground gardening, high tunnels. And so the idea of using container gardening for a small space, a gardening solution, isn't really something that I need. But I choose to still share it because I know so many of my audience and my viewers who are still in the dreaming stage. They're still in the waiting stage. They don't have room to even put raised beds or any in-ground space, certainly not high tunnels, but I know that they can throw up some, you know, green stock planters, some tower containers, and they can still grow food for their family where they are and utilize the season that they're in. So while this is not primarily how I'm growing food, for me personally, if I'm being completely honest, this is just more of an aesthetic thing. I still like to take time to do these videos and share these resources because I know out of all the people who watch our channel, there is someone here who's gonna need this space saving tip, who's gonna need to know and probably research, how do I grow food when I have no space at all? And I do think that green stock planters are a perfect resource for that, to utilize your small space, to be able to throw this on your front porch, your back porch, maybe even an apartment balcony, and still be able to nurture that dream you have until you get to that next step. Green stock right now is offering a big mass summer blowout sale active today through September 7th and this is unlike any sale they've ever done in the sense of they are discontinuing items and you can get them super super cheap so I'll hop more on that later so in this video I'm not only gonna unbox this show you guys how easy it is to set up your green stock we're actually gonna be planting these two green stocks with some of my fall favorites that do really well being grown in containers in case you find yourself in a similar season where you're wanting to plant something but you're limited on space. So throughout this video as well, I will be throwing up graphics of some of the different sales green stocks having in this big summer blowout. They've got the three tier and the five tier leaf planters, which are these shorter pockets, which I actually really prefer. I just kind of like the aesthetic of what that looks like. But then they have a lot of really great bundles as well, where you can bundle and kind of get everything you need to get started. You can also stack my code WWFARM for additional $10 off. So this green stock planter, this size is on on sale for 79 bucks once you stack my code and get ten dollars off because that's a great deal for a small little garden in your backyard all right let's put one together let's see how easy this is so i do have all of the movers with mine which i love so they'll actually be wheels that we pop in um and it's a spinner which is really fun and for some reason my kids just think that is like out of this world so this is the spinner um I really do like it, it just makes it easier. Obviously I'm drawn to the green, so that's the one I have here. I've got the little wheels that go on here. It does show you assembly the disc, which this is how you're actually gonna water. Here is the hose you're gonna connect to the back to just advert water, which is nice. So this is the leaf planter as well. Again, just shorter pockets. Um, I just like it. It doesn't require as much soil to fill up. Um, I like the aesthetic of it. It's kind of a squattier pocket. Again, totally just preference. They do have the original and the leaves on sale. I just kind of gravitate to these shorter pockets. So this one here is the one, two, three, four, five, six. This is the seven tier. So I got the seven tier here. I'm only gonna be using five tiers because that's how I have my other ones set up. And then this came with some Fox Farm fertilizer, which is really great. I like to mix this in with my water to give my plants a boost. Just make sure that you are reading the label on the back so that you don't burn up your plants. But this is nice because this came with my package. So I'm gonna put all the things aside I don't need right now and we will get busy 
just putting it together. All right, so one thing that's really, really important if you're choosing to do container gardening, tower gardening, anything like that, especially these types of planters that the pockets are shorter, soil quality is going to make or break the success. I hear a lot of people say, I try to go in containers, it doesn't work for me. You know, I mean, I, there's just a lot of kind of controversial things when it comes to container planting. And there are two things that I believe you can do to set yourself up for success if you are working with tanners. One, choose good quality soil because when you think about the life and longevity of your plant just being, you know, fed by that little bitty pocket of soil, you want to make sure that you don't buy the cheapest soil. You want to make sure you have something that's full of just nutrients and can actually feed your plant to grow. The second thing is set yourself up on a good watering schedule because they do have a tendency to dry out faster. You want to make sure that you're just staying on top of that. But if you're diligent with good quality soil and a good watering schedule, I really do think you're going to set yourself up for success. So the first thing we're going to do is attach our wheels to the mover. and take your little uh, plastic tubing and connect it to the back here. It'll be really obvious where it goes and that's just what's gonna spit that excess water so that your plants aren't drowning. So now we've got the base done. Now we can start building. I do like to lay out all of my tiers and fill them up with soil. There will be a soil line in there. It is important to make sure you put, um, you know, soil where the soil line is. Again, just the idea of giving your plants as many nutrients as you can. But for the sake of today's video, I'm just gonna show you guys how to assemble it and then we're gonna plant the ones that already have soil in it. But there are these little notches on here you guys can see. That's going to go down, but then as you continue to build, you're going to line that up pretty well. In between each tier, you're going to have one of these discs, and these discs have these holes that you can see around it. You want to line that up with the pocket because this is a direct hole that is actually going to um, irrigate that pocket in your green stock, so that's pretty important too. things to keep in mind if you are adding soil which you should do it's going to take you a little bit longer to put this together than you just saw in that time lapse and it will be a lot sturdier you guys can see here it's a little wobbly that soil is going to act as kind of like the concrete and it's going to really make sure that these stick together so you can see over here this one that I have soil in it's not going anywhere it's super stable so just know lay it all out put good quality soil the discs go in between each layer and you guys can see here your water from the top it will drip down into these and there's a hole in each of these pockets and that is what will irrigate and then any excess at the bottom will be drained and diverted so now that i've showed you guys how simple and easy it is meaning there is no limitations if you can't even pick up a bag of soil but you got a nice little scoop you can just scoop in and pour out and this can be super easy you guys know I love systems that I can do myself and so I love that I can come out here throw a green stalk together and start planting and I don't need any extra hands or labor involved so that's great so now we get to do the fun thing and plant I have brought some of my seeds out here I like to store my seeds in these photo containers because it's really nice how you can go in and just label them it just makes it really easy especially if you're bringing them out to the garden so there's you know these little bitty um, four by six photo containers and I like to put my seeds in here and then label it so if you want to know my system on this I'll leave a video up here you guys can go back and reference it but when it comes to planting in containers and being successful we've talked through some of the basics right making sure you have quality soil setting yourself up on a good watering system it's also growing those varieties that can do well and thrive in a container for me 
there's nothing worse than just like willy-nilly gardening and just wasting your time and energy, right? I want the things that I'm growing and I'm planting to be productive. And I've found when it comes to container gardening and green stock gardening, it's important to just choose those varieties that can grow and thrive in containers. And so things like that for me are going to be all my leafy greens. They grow so well in a container. They don't need a lot of space. They thrive in various conditions. So a lot of those leafy greens, lettuce, arugula, spinach, Spinach, kale, those things are gonna do so good in a green stock. Those are a lot of what I'm gonna be planting today. I also like to do radishes. Those are small, they mature quickly, little baby beets, um, and flowers. I'm gonna be planting some nasturtiums, violas, um, pansies, those edible flowers, even some calendula. So there's a lot that you can do. So one thing that's important to think about is how big is that plant getting? And is the support of your container that you're growing in going to be enough for that? And so for me, I just like to stick to those easy wins. Um, my kids usually always help me with the green stocks too. And so I want to make sure that we're planting those things that they're seeing a lot of abundance and fruitfulness from. So uh, again, I'm going to be planting lettuce. We're going to be doing beets some carrots, some radishes. We're also going to be doing some bush bean varieties, which I've grown in the green stocks before, and they do really well. Um, some rutabagas, chard, and all that fun stuff. So let's get started. It's always so hard for me to figure out like aesthetically what I want. So I am going to be doing nasturtiums and I'm probably going to do that on the bottom. That way if they start to bush and vine out, they can just keep trailing along the walkways here. And so the nasturtium varieties I'm going to be growing in here is a purple emperor. We've got a tip top Alaska salmon, which is beautiful here from Baker Creek and a cherry rose jewel. So I actually grow these in my tunnel and sell for edible flowers and they do really well, but I thought this would just be so much fun and would just add pops of colors. I think about these colors against those greens and I just think that it's stunning. And then on the next row, I'm going to be doing bush beans. I've got a Eureka variety here from Botanical Interest. I'll have all of the links to the green stalks, to the seeds, everything just down in the description below. So make sure you check that out. We're going to be doing a Tongues of Fire, which is just so pretty. And then one that's kind of similar to that called a Borlotti. Again, these are all bush beans, which is what I recommend if you're growing um, in a container gardening. Make sure that they're just going to get bushy and not start trailing or need some sort of extra support. Now I'm going to move into my leafy greens. The things at the top are probably going to be like my radish and beets and things like that. So I'm going to put these back in my container. And this is very much hodgepodge. Now I mentioned this is more of just an aesthetic thing for me. This is not primarily where we're growing all of our food um, at all. And so for me, I do have the luxury of just kind of not choosing those high productive varieties. I can just make this whimsical and beautiful and I can do that because I have other space to grow in. But if you are using these for food production, make sure you find those hybrid varieties that are gonna yield a lot, that can withstand various conditions. That way they just thrive despite being in a container. Um, and so those are some things that I would recommend if you're really wanting to just max out all that you can out of your green stock.
So I still have the new green stock to plant and I actually have another green stock I need to move up from the tunnel. So one I'm gonna do primarily in leafy greens, right? So arugula, spinach, baby green mixes, things that I know do well in containers and they also thrive in my area. And then the other one, I'm wanting to do more edible flowers, more kind of herbs that can crank out quickly um, because I bake a lot of sourdough and I love being able to have those edible flowers like those pansies and violas and butterfly peas and just kind of see how they do it. I did grow violas and pansies in these in the spring and they did really well and so I'm probably just going to plant another one with edible flowers and see how it goes. So thank you guys for hanging out with me as I showed you how easy it is to assemble a green stock. Shared with you some of the things that thrive in a green stock specifically right now in the fall or transitioning into fall and do not forget you can use my code WWFARM for an extra $10 off your order. So if you've been thinking about grabbing a green stock, now's the time to do it because some of these different planters, once they sell out, they're not going to have any more. So just one more time, the sale starts today through September 7th. The link to order is down in the description as well as the seed companies um, with some of the things that I planted today. But if you have any more questions specifically on container gardening, I touch on this some in my book, The Tiny But Mighty Farm, when I walk through the different gardening styles. But since I'm not primarily growing a ton in containers, I don't do a lot of content around that. But I do want to meet a need if the need is there. So if you have specific questions, leave them in the comments. I would be happy to help you troubleshoot and just give as much, you know, best advice as I can as possible to just make sure that you're growing in whatever season you are in. And I do think that these are really great for a small space solution. So thank you all so much for hanging out with me today. I'll talk to y'all soon.